So, you know, we talked a little bit about the Lane Kiffin trolling going into it. Now it's time to actually get into the matchup. An Ole Miss team that, yes, went on the road and uh, was able to take care of business against Tulane, you know, then against Georgia Tech, give up a lot through the year, but you come out with a, you know, pretty handy win. The the case has not been there for Alabama, which, you know, blew out Middle Tennessee, takes the loss to Texas, and then looks wholly uninspired uh, against South Florida. Uh, Danny, wh- where do you start to pick this one apart? All right, trivia. Yes, yes, yes. Does anybody know who leads Ole Miss in rushing? It's Jackson Bentley. Dart. No, it is Chip oh, is Dart. right. Okay. It is Jackson Dart, which I think is a problem. Now, I'm curious, Bud, have you got any update on Quinshaw Judkins? Because I was reading some things that he was banged up uh, this past weekend. You know, there was a question mark whether he play against Georgia Tech. He did play, but then you saw the Ulysses Bentley come in and get a lot of workload too. Ultimately, you got to get more from the run game. Um, and then that's what you've historically looked with Lane Kiffin since he's been at Ole Miss when they've been whoever it was. Of course, Quinshawn Judkins was the guy, but they've always been towards the top three of rushing in, you know, in the SEC. And it hasn't been necessarily their quarterback taking the majority of the workload. That to me is a little bit of a problem. Yes, it's great to have a mobile quarterback. And Jackson Dart's yards are a little bit skewed because he went off against Georgia Tech for 145 or something. Yeah, 136 he had against, of those 213 he had against Georgia Tech. But that was the first thing that jumped out to me. I don't think that's sustainable uh, with Jackson Dart leading the way. Some of, One of those backs has to step up. They've got to be able to run the ball a little bit more effectively. And then for Alabama, as much as we've talked about the quarterbacks, I think this is a Tommy Reese game. He has to utilize... The, the best coordinators work to the strengths of their quarterbacks. And against Texas, it looked like Tommy Reese was saying, I'm going to call a game based on what I want to do offensively, schematically, as opposed to saying, I have this quarterback, I'm going to call a game that best suits his skill set. He's got he's to change that dynamic because I don't think you can fit a square peg in a round hole if Tommy Reese keeps saying, I'm going to just call a system. You need to call it for your quarterback. So to me, offensively, that to me is one of the bigger keys for Alabama. And they need the receivers need to step up. And like when I say scheme, he's got to get guys running open. Clearly, Milro needs to hit them in stride, which is a accuracy issue, which we don't know if Milro has. But if he does hit the receivers in stride, they need to start giving him separation. They need to start getting open for him. They need to start making big plays for him. To follow you real quick on Dart, he's been good. He's yeah, been better. And look, he's got a Mercer performance that is slightly inflating the you know overall stat set from three games. But when you have seven touchdowns, one interception, like ten to twelve yards per attempt on the season so far, and then to go with the, sort of my anecdotal notes in the Tulane game, there were times where he had to step up and go make big throws on third down against a a defense that was getting after it. It took four sacks in that game, but he was able to hang in there and be able to make some winning plays. I think Jackson Dart has been better. I I agree with you, Danny. You do not want him as your leading uh, rusher as a team. But the overall set of what I've seen and you know what we can compile says that Jackson Dart has taken a step forward from where he was last year, where I thought he was mostly one-dimensional and not very much of a threat as a passer. It seems like that pass game has uh, has picked up just a little bit. For Bama, it, it feels like they need to just the, – the first step is acceptance or admitting that you have the problem, right? It feels like they're trying to make this thing to where – if they if they hit it right, they could still win a national title because that's always the goal in Tuscaloosa. They need to admit to themselves that they cannot win a national title with this current group of quarterbacks, right? The new goal needs to be find some way to win the West, right? Like clearly, if you get in the playoff, you can't win games with Milrow. Um, if I get well actually on that, fine. Mir- miracles happen every day in, in this world, I guess. But like, you need you need to have this kid running the ball on designed runs more than 10 times per game in these big games. He is not a good passer of the football. He does not throw the ball very well with anticipation. You need to basically get the offense redesigned this week to where you're featuring his legs. His legs are much better than his arm is. You need to play low-tempo, defense game, low possession, 
try to let the offensive line block with better angles that you're creating with the QB run game and stop trying to, to run this type of offense. We're like, oh, if it hits, we can still be that level of team. Guys, it ain't going to hit, right? R run the quarterback, run the quarterback, run the quarterback. Let the offensive line be physical with better angles. And also, like, I don't think they got pushed around that much by USF. They kind of have a recognition issue where, like, USF is outnumbered at a point of attack. USF is, is like, late, or excuse me, rather way too early on some of these blitzes they're bringing. Bama's like, oh, cool, we're just going to not check out of this play. What? Like, like, I mean, good God, just, just flip, flip it out there. Like, like it's, it was kind of just disgusting to watch. Uh, so maybe a little more check with me. Which right. I thought I think think maybe it. that's more, even not even the look over the side, but that's where I thought Milro being around the system longer yeah. was more prepared for that. Because that's what I, when I went back and watched Buckner, it did not look like he was comfortable. He wasn't making the right reads. He was kind of skipping over some. He kind of predetermined where he was going to throw. It did not look like a quarterback who had played in that system very long. And I know they were together, but it's, it's Saban's, you know, it's the, Alabama offense, not the Tommy Reese bringing his offense. And I thought you could tell. I I agree that they need to run Jalen Milrow more because here I'll go, I'll go to the Danny trivia. Do you know who leads Alabama in rushing? Oh, God. Is it Milrow? No. Milrow? Middle Tennessee game? Nope. It is Roy Dale Williams followed by Jace McClellan, two senior running backs. I love seniors. Love having experience on my offense. Don't love seniors at the running back position. feel like if yep. you're a senior as a running back – if I'm Alabama, I'm preferring you're in the NFL right now. So I I look at this Alabama run game, and if you look at it and you take out the quarterback runs, this is a team that just strictly using running backs ranks 88th nationally in rushing success with the running backs. They're 114th in yards before contact. The offensive line is not opening holes for these guys. The running backs really aren't doing much with the what they do get when the holes are there. It has not been good. So you do need to implement Jalen Milrow and make him more active in this run game to, if nothing else, help open up lanes for your running backs and make defenses have to counter for or account for that extra rusher that, that open things up. And also on the flip side, Ole Miss so far this year defensively been pretty stout against the run. They're seventh nationally in yards allowed before making contact with the runner. So it's a Decent run defense that Alabama is going up against. And as Bud, I, I agree with you. This isn't Alabama team that's going to be able to beat you through the air. Like Jalen Milrow is going to hit some shots deep. And, you, you know, you have to hope he connects on them. But it's not like you can go up and down the field with this offense, you know, throwing the ball seven or eight times. It's got to be run, 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 shot, run, 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 shot. And I think this Ole Miss defense is pretty well equipped for that. So this is going to be a pretty tough matchup for Alabama again. I know. It's, it's also. So, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chip. I was just going to say it stinks because you're coming out of the Georgia Tech game and you're like, man, Haynes King and Georgia Tech, they threw the ball all over this Ole Miss defense. Now all you need to do is just throw the – oh, no. Mm. I'm so sorry. Mm. I, yeah. I've got this I've got this door, Alabama. If you could just walk through it, then you've got the key to unlocking this Ole Miss defense. I don't know if they got it. I mean, you, you can't be in the hundreds in, in, in yards before contact and just put that just on talent, right? Like clearly there, no. there's some scheme stuff. They, they need to pick a lane and just – just be directed to that, right? Like, like the, just play as one offense, not try to incorporate a bunch of different stuff. Totally agree. Like, Ole Miss's secondary is way worse than its front. Uh, Ole Miss's defensive interior is actually kind of good. Yes. Uh, you know what's not good? Ole Miss's offensive line. Mm -hmm. They, like, Tulane ate their ass up. Yeah. And, like, respectfully, Tulane is a pretty good defensive front. Might be the best defensive front in the G5. Tulane ain't Bama, right? Like that is a major concern if you're old miss, as are Franklin hadn't played, Harris didn't play last game, and Prescorn, who I, I think is one of the best tight ends in the country and definitely the best tight end in the transfer portal, he also hasn't played. Now, will they play? I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's certainly possible. I, I I'm reading all of our reports, you know, Bama 247 as, as well as, as inside the Rebels, but man, I if they don't have those guys. I think Bama's going to win like a super ugly game because like they don't have anybody else who scares me on the outside. And I'm very confident that Ole Miss can't block Alabama. So they have to find ways to trick Alabama. Do you think Lane is unusually confident or just Lane being Lane? Because the comments Get your popcorn were, ready. I think right, I'm Bama's right. Got you've done that, but it wasn't all week long. Like mm -hmm. that was right before the game in the moment. 
he's out there tweeting songs about Taylor Swift, the castle's crumbling, like all this stuff. I mean, he is, and he feels, and he's dressed it multiple times. Like, I just feel like he's more confident. Granted, maybe last year's game, they kept it close. I just wonder what he sees. And maybe it's the quarterback issues Bama has. I don't know. He feels like something's something's up. And I think he probably likes his chances, which I guess I would Does too. Does he see I think he knows opening? Bama's done. Yeah, he sees a job opening in Tuscaloosa. He's just <laughs> going for an interview. He's going to be like, hey, listen, if I go in there and, and light it up, I'll tell you who I'm who's gonna be on the call sheet. It was like I was I was they wanted me at Auburn. I'll do you one better. Let's let's take me at Alabama. I would I would take the first quarter over on Ole Miss's team total. I feel yes, like Lane's gonna have some script cooked play. up for this one. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm I'm feeling a feeling a little bit worse about you know the CBS Sports HQ that they hold your feet to the fire, make make you make a pick, you know, even if it's on Tuesday. I was like, Alabama Ole Miss over. Now we're talking about this. I'm like, I don't know if I like that over anymore. <laughs>